Thus proceeding between ice and ice, we see a great island of ice tumble over. A good warning to us not to come here. Being fearful of the ice coming down upon us, I gave up the design I had formed of plying to the I west. I told the men that to help each other meant death for all. Twice my boots broke the ice. This is the finish, I said to myself. Ice. A drifting, frozen sea. The awful cold. Nature at the height of her majesty. Yet men have come to the Arctic for 500 years, probing and hammering at a hundred horizons in search of great prizes and glory. Explorers come still, but now their mission is to stay and build. here first. Their prize, life itself. No glory attached to their struggle. Eskimos learned the Arctic secrets, adapted and stayed on. The unstable, cruel environment was home. Adventurers would learn from them or die. Henry Hudson came in the years between 1607 and 1610. He sought the Northwest Passage, a shortcut to the riches of the East. The next day we had a great storm and were driven to put in amongst the ice there to lie. Some of our men fell sick. I will not say from fear, though I saw no other symptoms to explain their sickness. Mutiny, hunger and death overcame Hudson. He and his son set adrift abandoned to the ice. North for the corridor to China, the expeditions moved. Frobisher, three voyages for Queen Elizabeth, three failures. Bering, west past the Aleutians and wrecked. Captain James Cook, 1778. I will not say it were an impossibility anywhere to get in among this ice, but I will assert that the bare attempting of it would be a very dangerous enterprise. I, who hope ambition leads me farther than any man has been before me, was not sorry at meeting with this interruption. Cook turned back, his only defeat. One of a legion of brave men stopped or killed by the endless ice. Franklin, frozen in the ice off Victoria Island. 129 men, the entire expedition, lost. The Greeley Expedition, 1881-1884. Jones is worse and can't last more than two or three days. Craig is nearly helpless. We can't hope to reach Polaris Bay without assistance. We'll go as far as we can and live as long as we can. Robert Peary moved against the Arctic ice four times. The assault in 1909 gave him the North Pole. We returned from the Pole to Cape Columbia in only 16 days. The exhilaration of success led wings to our sorely battered feet. But Uta, the Eskimo, had his own explanation. Said he, the devil is asleep for having trouble with his wife. Or we should never have come back so easily. Man against the Arctic. The challenge continues today. And nature is always the winner when she is discounted, forgotten, or misunderstood. A 19th century writer said, There are no more islands of the blessed. 
tempting the dreamer over the undiscovered sea. Nothing but those cliffs of everlasting ice and mainlands of frozen snow, which never produced anything but a late and sad discovery of the depths of human heroism. The writer was wrong. Those cliffs of everlasting ice conceal the stuff of dreams. And today, new expeditions ply the white horizons led by men who cannot know enough about ice, about cold. 20th century explorers seeking the Arctic's greatest prize, oil. We know it's here, vast reserves of it. But can we find it, get to it, beneath a drifting, frozen sea? North, the scientific expeditions move, crisscrossing the ice ocean on roads that turn to water in the spring. On the ice pack, today's explorers seek out the conditions, learn from the cold that broke the crews of yesterday. East of Barrow, north of Alaska in Arctic waters. An island made of gravel, made by man standing tall in the Beaufort Sea, an island designed to break the moving packs of ice. We monitor the ice practically all the time. We got people out there and a lot of fancy instruments, guns too, in case the polar bears want to play. If that ice pack really starts moving, we'll go on alert, quit drilling and get ready to move out. Temperature can get down to 50 below. I want to tell you, it ain't the Gulf of Mexico. But gravel islands, as good as they are, as strong, are impractical in deeper Arctic waters. We're lucky the voyage across the Pacific was easy. No bad storms, no problem really till we hit the Beaufort Sea. Of course, nothing like this, nothing that floats, has ever been built. We're pretty confident, but you never know until you try it. Sixty-five thousand tons of engineering knowledge. At home, where no other structure has stood. Built to withstand and also adapt to the forces massed against it. Positioned above a suspected oil deposit, then flooded and lowered. Formidable and secure on the floor of the Beaufort Sea. In her own defense, the great concrete and steel sentinel sprays up to 16,000 gallons of seawater a minute into the sub-zero air of late October making ice, ice against ice. A solid wall rising from the ocean floor to hold back the Arctic's most awesome assault, pack ice. This is the tricky time. We look frozen in, but this ice is still moving, and we're still a long way from getting the ice wall up. November. That's the end of the sun for two months. Still drilling, but nothing to show for it yet. We'll see what happens and worry some more in the spring when the ice starts moving again.
for today's explorers, the adventure lies here. The challenge and the glory, buried miles beneath the ice. I will not say it were an impossibility anywhere to get in among this ice, but I will assert that the bare attempting of it would be a very dangerous enterprise. I, who hope ambition leads me farther than any man has been before me,